What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's TV review of Bel Air Season 1, Episode 4, which is called Canvas. This episode is directed by Dale Stern. Now, before we begin, if you like this channel, awesome. Hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button as well as commenting below any video that you watch, including this one. And so this episode is, is really interesting because of what it's trying to do, the puzzle pieces and chess pieces that it's trying to move. It's interesting in the fact that even though there are different segments going on in this episode, there are different pieces and parts moving, this episode is, in essence, boils down to how everybody is different. Everybody does way, things the way that they do in different ways. This is an episode where people have to come to understandings that you may not be able to change who they are or what they are. You know, Will and Carlton have been coming to blows throughout the entire series so far and there's some really interesting dichotomy which i'll talk about there's stuff between phil and viv that really kind of shows differences there's also hillary and viv in that whole situation where she's trying to move out but it's also interesting to see the level of mystery that is coming between uh will and jeffrey and the whole rashad thing and how that is, plays out and eventually concludes and it's just, it's really interesting. It's really interesting to see those convenient on how much of, um, how much like back world situation he has, Jeffrey has that he can pull a lot of strings and get a lot of stuff done. But like I said, we'll talk about that. But this episode is basically, it's about Phil trying to get constituents to vote for him for DA. He wants to change everything, but he, as we've seen through the entire series is a little hard headed on when it comes to what exactly he needs to do. And it takes his family to kind of make him realize that there are more than being a politician. You have to win over the people. You have to be on the people's level or you're not going to get what you need because people see right through the fakeness of politicians this is an episode that really kind of de delves into the kind of nature of politicians in general especially in this day and age and how you know the things that are said are never fully committed to and how things are you know really corrupt and stuff like that there's an incident with will and carlton where they talk to this individual and he he says he says his piece he's like i have no idea if this guy he is it's basically like i could hold a rock and another rock and they're both the same how do i how do i have have any commitment that this guy is going to be different and he slams the door in their face which is very very interesting but this episode in its essence like i said is about the family trying to campaign campaign in different ways for him and it sees um hillary and ashley basically you know going around to different locations and businesses trying to put up signs trying to get that you know that vote and this is kind of the least amount of stuff but they basically end up at jazz's record shop now somebody in the in my comments said you know what's learn what was fun you know what is jazz what is his purpose in this episode his purpose is almost like jiminy cricket in a weird way for will and the rest of the crew because unlike the original series jazz is actually quite smart and quite uh street smart with what he's trying to do it with what he's trying to do he is not an individual that is going to be thrown out of phil's house he's a guy that owns a record shop he also hustles his way as a cab driver and i love that i love what they are doing with the characters that were almost like caricatures in the original series they're giving them purpose they're giving them uh some semblance of realism and i love the connection that uh hillary has with jazz even though it's a a little too you know on the goofy side in a lot of respects the fact that hillary sets up a instagram account for jazz and it helps her get into an influencer house, which she's been struggling to get into, is quite interesting. It really is. It's actually quite well done and quite good. And I found that kind of whole concept just like, you know, really intriguing. And, you know, maybe there's something there between the two, which it would never have happened because there's always a running joke in the original series about Jazz always trying to hit on Hillary, but Hillary's too snobbish and too, you know, too airheaded that she would never date somebody like as goofy as Jazz. And here, because it's such a realistic episode, a realistic nature, there's some possibility to that, which I really like. And I do like the fact that Hillary... Even though she's smart, she still has a little bit of that rich attitude in her way, you know, talking about how she can't find a place, she can't afford it. Will kind of calls her out on it as it like kind of a, a, a fun jab at you know, Hillary and kind of her idealism and stuff like that. And she knows that she needs to find a way to do what she needs to do. But she keeps getting rejected by all the influencer houses, which, like I said in my last episode that I rec you know did a review on, Hillary is us. Hillary, not uh, not us, not like me, but Hillary is today's culture where influencer houses are very important. 
where the idea of being an influencer is very important and the concept of, you know, the way, you know, the Instagrams and the uh, Snapchats and the YouTube and all that good stuff is really kind of a thing that a lot of young people gravitate towards is because they it's a way to get yourself out in the open. It's much more like open in its nature of, you know, exposure and stuff like that. So that's why, you know, the traditional way of doing work and stuff like that is not what it used to be. Like people want to be on YouTube. People want to understand YouTube and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting and unique. I like the fact that, you know, Viv, who... I want I want to appreciate her character, but she needs to learn a lot. It's the unfortunate nature of someone who feels like they're still stuck in like the 90s or 80s in this kind of mentality. It's 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 a little annoying, a little problematic, but you can kind of understand that she was she had some issues, she had some problems with the fact that she was a up and coming artist, a painter, and that kind of got put to the side when they have kids. So I think she struggles with the fact that you know Hillary is getting to something and she can't understand why that's happening when it could have happened to her. It's just it's a really sad thing to think about. But I actually it's I enjoy Viv's character, but I just it needs more fleshed out to be fairly honest. But we'll get into some more in just a second. But then we get Ashley's character, which finally gets something to do, which I'm really happy about because I've been saying for the, the last three episodes, what is she? Is she just a background puppet character that she's kind of around just for whatever? She has a nice moment with her mom about the idea of, you know, supporting Phil, which kind of leads into her character about the idea that, you know, the whole family needs to be there for her and stuff like that. But she has a really interesting kind of arc where, in essence, she's helping uh, Hillary campaign doing the whole thing. She makes an excuse because she's been typing on her phone with someone that she's really attracted to and she leaves leaves jazz's uh, place that she's going to go to another office or another place of business and she ends up at her friend's house now her friends are really interesting they're really today society in a lot of aspects with the phones and stuff like that where in essence they're playing because this is a universal show a peacock show they're in essence playing jurassic world the game or whatever type of game it is mobile mobile game so they're not really having conversations with one another they're just playing the game at the home which i thought was really interesting because you know i come from a time where you would sit at home play you know uh well you you would play the same thing but you would play with a controller a, a video game console stuff like that you play you know land parties and stuff like that you would talk to your friends and here they're just on their phones you can tell it's it's really truthful to this day society i'm not saying friends don't talk to one another and have a good time but the way they are showing this the way they're kind of exposing it i thought that was kind of funny it's it's made to be in jest of the idea that you know kids are more committed to their phones than they are committed to talking to one another so they could actually be like you know uh facetiming or something like that with each other right next to each other and it's just the way the world is you know I, i've been known to text my friend who's like next door to me and stuff like that so so it's, it's a funny thing, but it is a truthful thing in a lot of aspects. But she is taking, she's, um, she's playing with her friends and then Jeffrey shows up because Jeffrey knows everything. Apparently Jeffrey's that type of individual. He's omnipotent or whatever you want to call it in the, the real world. And he takes her out and they have a conversation and she's like, you know, are you going to tell my dad? Are you going to tell my mom? He's like, no, I'm not going to do this, but you got to be realize that, you know, you got to be careful and stuff like that, you know, especially in this day and age. And then later on during the, the big fundraiser at the skating rink, which I, I thought was a cool kind of concept, uh, Jeffrey invites uh, her friends over and one of her friends is a female and she happens to give the female a look, which really is an interesting concept. I don't, you know, people are like really weird about this kind of stuff, but it really makes a lot of sense if they're going this way with Ashley being a lesbian, I guess you could say, with the simple fact that, you know, how is her family going to react to this? If this true, if, if I am gathering what I'm gathering from what I'm seeing, maybe she's hiding the fact that, you know, she's scared that how her parents are going to react. And I think it's going to go better than she thinks it is. But I thought that was an interesting way to kind of, you know, position a character that could have a really interesting story arc and a very interesting storyline down the road that this is an early payoff for that particular role. So I think this character, even though she's still kind of shallow in her character development and writing, you're at least giving something about Ashley. She's a main part of the show, always been a main part, always been one that's been really close close to will but it's just like there's nearly never been to stuff to do with her in this episode in the series and i'm glad that they finally gave her something to do so we'll see how that plays out we'll see how the relationship plays out and i, I really look forward to hopefully them developing more of her story so 
But that leads into the uh, Phil and Viv stuff. Phil is, of course, you know, trying to get DA ship to become a district attorney. He's having he's hitting brick walls basically because he doesn't know how to talk to the, his constituents, his people. He basically does something really stupid. Viv's struggling throughout this entire series. In a, in a nutshell, she is struggling in the simple fact that she wanted to become a painter or she was a, like a pretty successfully up and coming painter. The, she fell in love with Phil. They had kids and she put it to the wayside as the unfortunate nature of what you do when it comes to being creative, but having to worry about your family. And Viv's talking about how she, you know, wants to, you know, this, she's talking to her friend and the friend says, there's this, uh, influencer of an uh, artist coming into the town and basically what ends up happening is he can, he's looking for people that you know have something that they've lost basically he's he's finding people he's refining people that were once you know popular up-and-comers so she's really interested in that she brings her paint set in I'm sure that's gonna play that later on in the series but then it, it focuses on her having to commit to Phil with his DA thing and Phil, because because Viv is very talkative and very outspoken of what she says, he basically asks her to just kind of keep her stuff, keep her mind to herself, so that she doesn't do something really stupid to hurt him. Well, as we find out later on, Phil is hurting himself because of how he's approaching the situation and so on and so forth. He sees it. He really gets upset at Will with what Will do, does later on, but we'll find out. And I'll tell you about that in a minute or two. But it doesn't go well for Phil. The people he's been talking to really kind of aren't on board with his, you know, voting for him. And Viv finally just comes clean. And she's like, you need to come down on their level. You need to talk to them. You need to be honest and you need to be truthful and not hold anything back because it, later on, as we learn, it has an effect on a certain situation. But I thought that was interesting. Like I said, I'm not entirely on board with his character, but I understand where she comes from in the sat and the simple fact of, you know, what she used to be, how she feels, you know, somewhat guilty that she doesn't have that anymore. And she, I think that's why she's so hard on Hillary because she's worried that Hillary's going to do the same thing. But Viv's got to realize that Hillary's got to do what she needs to do. She has a route and she has what she has. And it's just she needs to do what she needs to do. And it's really interesting to see Viv, you know, kind of come to that conclusion to kind of realize that maybe she needs to be more open minded. But like I said, we'll see if that, you know, as the series has proven, things kind of fall back into the same traps as we've seen with a little bit of Carlton in this episode. So Phil is holding a fundraiser which is at a skating rink he go he goes there and he ends up you know i'll talk about it in the end but there's something that happens that i thought was really kind of interesting so but this leads into the will and carlton stuff and will of course like i said has found out that rashad knows where will's at he's going to come get him you know kill him stuff like that so like i said will goes to jeffrey and jeffrey's like i'll take care of it so there's something really interesting there well will and carlton do not get along with each other they do not see eye to eye Carlton's very in his own bubble of just like snobbery and just how he acts. He's, he's like, people have made comments that he's been like that. This is a different approach to a character like Carlton. Carlton was one of those individuals that was very, he was very snobbish and he was very, you know, uppity with his kind of rule, his way, way and look of the world. This Carlton is struggling because Will is such a different, such a, a more interesting kind of crazy individual that Carlton feels is approaching on him. It's a whole alpha gang thing. It's a whole idea that Carlton feels like the very much the alpha of the kids group and Will comes encroaching and Will is very much an alpha in his own right because of what we've seen and how he acts and Carlton's can't handle that Carlton can't handle the fact that Will is that way and it really pisses him off you know really makes him angry and they make deals one Carlton makes a deal with Phil that he will you know do what he needs to do he will get the 50, 50 signatures that he needs to get for the you know re-election for the election for the DA and if he does uh, of course he will get a VIP thing for the Grand Prix whenever that comes along he'll be go with his father and Will hears about this and he makes a deal with Viv where if, if he gets the 50 signatures or he gets a lot of signatures that Trey will be brought out to visit Will, you know, in an upcoming episode. So, you know, it's the whole back going back to like when originally Don Tito, Cheeto played Trey, they're bringing Trey back out to LA. So I think it's a good kind of homage to the original series. In essence, Will agrees to it, and, you know, Viv agrees to it. And a good portion of this arc of this episode is Will and Carlton having to come to some kind of terms to getting along with one another, to not always be at each other's throat, to not want to kill each other. Because if you watch what they do, they're going around and Carlton's, you know, Will's just kind of hanging by the side, but Carlton's failing at getting signatures, door slammed over and over and over on them, and... 
they have an argument as they do, and Will gets upset. Will's like, you're not talking to the people. You're talking down to the people, the people that are going to vote for your dad. And Carlton gets really mad. He can't, you know, he doesn't understand what Will's trying to say, or at least he thinks he does, but he really doesn't. Will's like, screw this. He goes back to see Jazz as record shop. Jazz sets it straight. You know, you need to be there for your, your cousin, no matter what, in that situation. Will goes back. And they kind of have, for the most part, for at least this episode, kind of a, a reckoning. They have a... Uh, uh, basically a straight talk where they're in essence you know they come to an agreement that if they work together they can get what they want they won't always see eye to eye but they don't need to change who they are and that if they keep if the writers keep to that particular type of situation it will actually improve the eventual kind of bonding that i'm hoping will and carlton have later down in the series but we'll see what happens we'll see if they kind of go back down to the same you know well that they keep putting themselves in but they get the signatures they want and will does something that will has did like in the last episode where he thinks what he's doing is right and he ends up being correct but he basically invites everyone that he gets signatures to come to the fundraiser while carlton having the rich mindset he's like well these all these people were you know spent a lot of money on this fundraiser we had to give all the money back and phil says the same thing and will's like and will and viv are on the same level and they're like you can talk to these people these people are the people voting for you you need to be on their level and it comes to a head in the skating rink where they're having a big party and they're you know for the the da and whatever and will comes across um lisa he's been talking to lisa earlier in the episode but he sees lisa he goes in the bathroom Bathroom, he sees an officer a police officer and it's of course lisa's dad well we find out that he's the chief of police well this doesn't sit well with will because of what will's had to experience and the whole idea of cops and the whole idea, idea of defunding the police is very much you know the george floyd incident and so on and so forth and that i you know that's what it is in essence phil has kind of a uh, light bulb moment where you know people are asking him very difficult questions and he doesn't really know how to answer it but viv kind of sets him straight and even though the chief of police of LA is in this fundraiser he says what he thinks really needs to happen defund the police be on these people level talk to them and like a human being and they all cheer and even though Lisa's dad's probably not happy about it I mean there is a simple fact that it has not been good for the police and this is really trying to set in motion the whole idea that they need to fix something that he's not there to work for the police he's there to work for the people and the police are just a, you know somebody on the side that will help if there's some dangerous situations but i thought that was kind of very open and very honest and very approachable to a character that really hasn't seen the idea that he's a very rich individual and there's nothing wrong that he's rich but he's a very rich individual and the way people see politicians and attorneys is never been in a good light so he him kind of being down with the people really gives him an, an edge that probably his uh, runner, the, the mate he's you know, going against, is uh, probably not going to like, I guess you could say. so. But that officially leads to the concluding portion of this episode where Will gets the good news that Trey's going to come out to California. He FaceTimes Trey, and that's when we find out that Rashad is being killed. Now, it's very convenient story writing. I'm going to be fairly honest that have something like this happen. I'm not saying it ruins the episode or anything. But in the episode, we've seen Jeffrey go, I'm going to take care of it. As when they come back from the, the whole fundraiser thing, he uh, calls uh, Phil into his office and stuff like that. And he talks to the guy that we see watching Will earlier in the episode, and they have a discussion about Rashad. You find out there's been $10,000 paid to Rashad to kind of keep, uh, just leave it alone. Rashad, knowing that uh, Phil's rich, wants more money. And the reason I say this is convenient because it was a very dark thing that happened on the end of the last episode. And, late, and then finally, Finally, it's just concluded in this episode with Rashad being killed. So there's no real kind of story arc there. There's nothing really there. And then you find out Rashad is being paid. It doesn't really make any sense. It's not really um, well thought out at this moment. Hopefully later on, there'll be much more openness to it. There's mystery there with Jeffrey and what exactly he entails for this family. They're always talking about, you know, constantly upping the security. Who knows what Jeffrey's character is, is very much a mystery box. It'll open up later on, I'm sure. But it's just like, it's very convenient that this stuff was happening it's very convenient that Rashad died when he did it's just everything is about it is very convenient writing and it feels kind of kind of hollow in a lot of aspects it takes down the episode kind of a little bit just for that simple fact and you know Will's doing the same thing I'm doing he's like 
what is going on? Like, you know, he knows something's off and something's weird, but I don't know. Like I say, it's kind of a, a dark, it's kind of a sore spot in the entire episode, which is actually pretty good. I mean, to be fairly honest, but I'm just like, it's so convenient that Rashad was killed, that Jeffrey knows everything. And what is Jeffrey's connection? I, it's one of those things like you'll see in Lost where you're like, that's so convenient that happened. And later on, it's explaining it. it makes it more sense. But as of right now, it's just like, we'll see what happens. So, but anyways, that's pretty much it on the episode. There's not much else to talk about. It's um, very, it's a very good episode, if you're honest. Outside of those small nitpicks, it's an episode that really develops some characters that didn't have a lot of development in the original series and gives some oomph to this kind of storyline of Phil and Viv and the whole uh, DA ship and Will and his plight and stuff like that, Will Carlton and all that good stuff. So... And so with that said, I think I'll give this an eight and a half out of 10. Like I said, it's not a perfect episode. It has some problems. They can, that, the fact they keep going down the well over and over and over again is a little you know, bothersome and tiresome. But there is some significant like uh, movement and improvement upon some characters. So I do like that. But like I said, it's still, still a great episode for what it's worth. So anyways, that'll do it. That'll be my take on Bel Air season one, episode four, which is called Canvas. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, comments below. What do you think of the overall episode? Did you like it? Are you looking forward to the next few episodes? What was your overall take? Anyways, thank you so much. If you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell. Top the finals coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.